Hey everyone, NavyDoc5184 here, and welcome to my next reaction to Star Wars The Clone Wars. We're hitting up Episode 2, Rising Benevolence. Uh, if you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. If you are a returning viewer, thank you just as much. I appreciate everybody that stops by. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to get all my other reactions and definitely leave a comment let me know what you think all those greatly help the channel and i appreciate every bit of support you guys give me so again just thank y'all for stopping by so before i even go into really episode two i just kind of want to go back a little bit on episode one because as i said you know in my closing and i think even a little bit in my intro to that one I've seen a few episodes of Clone Wars and I've liked them enough to where it was like it really didn't bother me that they added characters, they added some storylines because they've done a great job I feel like in incorporating these characters into actual like canon Star Wars and they've done such a great job in adding these stories without really I guess you could say at least in my opinion I don't feel like they've really retconned anything that came in the movies and that is just such a masterful job to be able to do that i mean when you really think about it, that's really hard to do and i love the idea of having this period because i think one of the things that this show is going to do probably even for me is when you really see like the relationships you saw it a little bit in episode one with yoda and the three clone troopers he was with you know and how it was you know, he took time to get to know each of them individually, even though one of them was talking about, you know, how they're all clones, so all their faces are the same, but yet Yoda was able to look past that and really see how unique each one was. And I think that by itself kind of made, like, when inevitably Order 66 comes up, actually, I think, makes that even more heartbreaking. It's one of those things where it adds to it. It's like, you know how bad Order 66 was anyways, but then when you see really the depth of the betrayal, even though obviously it wasn't anything that, I guess you could say they could control, but still that sense of betrayal, you know, these clones that you've taken time, that you've built relationship with, that you've gone to battle with, you've trusted them with your lives, they've trusted you with their lives, and to see them you know turn against you like that it's one of those things where it's just it just really adds to the heartbreak of order 66 so it's very interesting to me to be able to see kind of that pan out in a way and man and i'm still not over how dumb those droids were in that first episode i'm like how in the world are the droids that stupid but i guess in the end when you really think about how the story ends it's not entirely crazy to think about i mean that could have been by design but at the same time it's just like wow it's like really no matter which way it turned out sidious was gonna win you know no matter which side won but um jeez I really don't know what else more I can say about episode one. Um, episode two, I took a, a brief glance of the description to see what it was. And I just gotta say, I'm really interested to see uh, the whole saga between Anakin and Ahsoka. <laughs> I mean, I've seen bits and pieces, like I said, from the episodes I have seen, um, you know, seeing how she reacted in the Ahsoka show, even how she reacted to facing Vader in Rebels. You know, and just seeing really how much Anakin meant to her. But I think what this is going to do is kind of just add uh, to really, really see the relationship. The one thing that I have not seen is how everything happened with her falling out um, with the Jedi Council and everything. Um, how her and Anakin split went about. I get a general idea how it was, like, but at the same time, it's just that is something that I'm really interested in seeing so we will go ahead and uh, get right into it if you'd like to see my full reaction to this um, feel free to uh, check it out on patreon I will be doing that in a watch along format which means you just have to have a copy of this yourself Clone Wars is available on Disney Plus and uh, there will be a timer in the bottom right corner that will let you know exactly where I am in the show that way you can uh, be in the exact same spot I am as we watch that together 
and let's go ahead and get started. We're tracking three Republic cruisers. What should we do? Grievous. Jam their transmissions. All right, I don't know who did the voice of Grievous, but that sounded pretty spot on. We need reinforcements. I'll have to ask the council, Master Plo. I was given strict orders to protect our staging area. Uh-oh. What is wrong with the transmission? There's too much interference, sir. We've lost them. So Anakin's been given strict orders. They're getting jammed. We know how this is going. Remember, be mindful and speak only when spoken to. Don't I always? That's weird to hear Anakin say something like that. <laughs> Have you had any success in finding General Grievous's secret weapon? Master Plo is here in the Abrogado system when we lost contact. So what's this secret weapon they're talking about? You may fire when ready. Uh oh. Yes, my lord. That never sounds good coming from a Sith. Oh, what's this? Fire. Oh, that looks familiar. Oh, what is this? We're losing all our power. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. No power, no shields. Oh. How do they get around this? Don't have much time. Get inside. Hurry. Wow. All right, we're in episode two, and it's like, it's crazy because in episode one, I was like, how in the world did the Separatists make a fight out of it? Now I'm looking at episode two, and I'm like, how do we counter that? A weapon that can completely disable the ships? Just because there haven't been any survivors before doesn't mean there won't be any this time. She is learning from Anakin. It's <laughs> I don't understand why- What you don't understand is Jedi protocol or your place, my young Padawan. Admiral. Wow. It's gonna take me a while to get used to seeing Anakin like this. I know if we work together, we will stay alive. And someone will find us. All due respect, General. If I was in command, I'd be hunting that weapon down. I value your life more than finding that weapon. What's going on here? new coordinates are too? Master. I should tell you why I spoke up before. You don't have to explain anything. You gotta remember, Anakin did the same thing in Attack of the Clones, pretty much. That's why I was expecting them to go anyways. You know, he was supposed to stay and protect uh, Padme, but they went to save Obi-Wan. And where's Skywalker? The, the General felt a redeployment of this fleet would increase our defensive perimeter. I see. <laughs> I think Obi-Wan knows what's up. Problem, sir. Anakin has just redeployed himself again. Again, yeah. <laughs> he knows. If anyone knows what's up, it's going to be Obi-Wan. The Abrogado system. Huh. So it's okay when you don't follow what the Council says. <laughs> what the Jedi Council says, that's one thing. How we go about doing it, that's another. Lives are in danger, Ahsoka. We can't just turn our backs on them. That's what I said back in the briefing room. I know, but the way you said it was wrong. I guess I should have known better to think that Anakin was going to be a huge stickler to the orders. Our position is Mark 12 at point two six. Let's cut this can open. I have visual contact. Pod 1977, do you copy? All they had to do is just bust open that window and they lose all their air and suffocate. <laughs> Things just got a lot worse. Yeah, they did. The scanners are practically useless. Got anything on the emergency channel, R2? Hey, if anybody can figure anything out, it's R2. How do you know Master Plo anyway? He's one of my oldest friends. It was Master Plo Koon who found me and brought me to the temple where I belonged. Now he's lost, so I thought maybe I could find him. That would be a story I'd like to see. I mean, I already saw, you know, her birth and how she was using the force, but seeing uh, somebody find her. Wolf, keep the communication signal alive. It is our only chance someone will find us. Let's just hope someone's looking for us. Oh, there is. Don't worry. Hey, what's a Jedi doing out here? <laughs> You really want to know? 
there. Take cover. You're, you are in the middle of space. Where are you going to take cover? Is there anyone out there? Come in. This is Ahsoka Tano. Is there anyone out there? R2, see if you can boost the reception. <sighs> Patience. We're trying to boost the power. Hang on. Thank you, Anakin. That's what I was about to say. Kind of. I was going to tell her to chill, but pretty much the same thing. Sinker, your turn. I'm on it, boss. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I don't mean to say <laughs> I told you so, but I never believed anyone would come looking for us. Yeah, except somebody has. A noble gesture, Anakin. But the council feels your daring may put others in danger. I'm curious to see what he feels about it. Turn at once. Yes, Excellency. Not gonna lie, I don't think I was really expecting that from Palpatine. They sense each other. Time to go, Ahsoka. No. Have to stay. Ahsoka, I want to believe. She Master senses Ahsoka. him. I know I just... he's alive. I can sense it. Ahsoka. <laughs> oh boy. We're just clowns, sir. We're meant to be expendable. Not to me. I'm noticing a theme in these two episodes about how the clones feel about themselves. Nice. Are you okay, Master Plo? There's someone in the pod. Well done. Shut down the power systems before they detect us. How are they gonna get out of this? The droid. Sorry, little guy. There's still no signal from the pod hunter. Reduce speed and activate your scanners. We will find who is responsible. Uh oh. Ooh. What's with the lights? Power is going out. Maybe that ship has returned. We should get up to the bridge. Uh, you are too weak. Oh no! They had to shut down R2. Is that droid gonna give them away on accident? Oh, dang it. Move us into attack position. Crap, y'all been spotted. How are they going to get out? Go to your draw. Target range almost locked, sir. Oh! R2, program the hyperdrive. Oh! Come on! Oh, if anybody can do it, it's R2. R2, come on. Come on! Come on! R2! 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 Oh! R2! <laughs> oh boy. I will have to discuss this with my master. Oh man, I'm glad I'm still relatively young. My heart almost couldn't take that. If I'm getting in trouble for this, you're gonna share some of the blame too. <laughs> So That's fair. Let's go. Right beside you, Sky Guy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All 
All right, y'all, that was Star Wars Clone Wars Episode 2, Rising Malevolence, and man, that last bit, man, that had me so on edge. Whew. Holy cow. Leave it to R2, though, to come in clutch. I mean, there's any a droid that you can count on to get you out of a sticky situation. It is R2-D2, and boy, oh boy, it had just been... Like, even a fraction of a second later. I don't know if they would have made it. That was close, but... Man, what an episode. Whew. Man, we're just in the first two episodes, and we've had quite a bit. I think what's really impressive about this is everything they're fitting into... I don't want to necessarily call them short episodes, but, I mean, they are kind of relatively short. I mean, all of them so far being under 30 minutes, but... I mean, they're packing in so much, but it's amazing how they're packing in everything they are, and yet it doesn't feel crowded, I guess, is uh, the best way for me to describe it. But, whoo, man. You know, as much as I would love to give some serious analysis on this, I'm going to have to really take some time to calm down. I might have to wait until my intro to episode three before I really get into a lot of discussions on this one, though I... You know, it's kind of crazy how in the first two episodes, the one theme that really seemed to be the same is I don't want necessarily want to say the clones like low outlook on themselves. I mean, in a way, it's not like he was wrong in this episode to say that the clones are meant to be expendable. But the thing that about it is while that may be true, you know, and this is the thing that I think kind of goes back into episode one in the quote there the, when they were talking about leadership. I think good leaders, you know, they will value those that are under their command. And you've seen that with Yoda. And you just saw that with Plo Koon. You know, they both, you know, valued their clones. They weren't just like, oh, well, you know, we got so many others made and everything like that. You know, they're treating them for what they are it's like even though their clones are each unique in their own way and i love the fact that they're really taking the time to show how they value those clones which again as i said in my intro to this one probably will add so much more emotion and you know heartbreak to order 66 because you're seeing these jedi who are showing that they value these clones for as unique individuals and just at the snap of a finger, these clones will just turn around and just snuff them out like they're nothing. And yet these are the people that were trying to make them feel special, you know, and show that they value their lives, that they aren't just simply clones that are there to help them win a war, where that may have been their whole, you know, intent of being created, but they don't treat them like that. They treat them as unique individuals. and. You know, already, just with what I'm getting there, just makes, you know, Order 66 feel like it's just that much more heartbreaking. But, man. And I gotta say, Anakin... It's gonna take me a while to get used to seeing Anakin like this. Now, granted, uh, what I was talking earlier, where it just was like hearing Anakin talking about obeying council orders, you know, you know, they have strict orders, you know, we have to do this, so we must. You know, hearing him talk like that, it's just like... Where is Anakin and what have you done to him? And then, uh, okay, no, Anakin's still Anakin, but, you know, I appreciate the fact of what he was trying to do with Ahsoka to where it's like, he's not completely disregarding the orders, but, you know, I guess you could say skirting them as it felt like, because it was kind of like Obi-Wan uh, pointed out, you know, it's like the fleet, you know, that was there, you know, it's not like he took them away. It just, it was just him, Ahsoka, and R2, but still, it's just... I can understand why the council would be frustrated with that. And actually, you know what's even crazier is when I think about this, it almost makes me feel like I can understand the council's reasoning for, um, you know, when they put him on the council, but they didn't grant him the rank of master. Because if he keeps up like patterns like this, you know, I would imagine that the Jedi in this point are probably more along the lines of like you know the ends don't justify the means so even though him you know skirting their orders 
you know, not only led to a good outcome where they saved one of their own, but now they have, they can give the info to the Republic on what this weapon is. But at the same time, the Jedi are just going to look at it as, well, he, you know, didn't fully obey orders. So if that's a pattern he keeps doing constantly, I completely understand why, you know, they probably didn't make him a master. Now, granted, I know that in Revenge of the Sith, they pretty much hinted that the only reason they let him on the council is because they wanted him to spy on Palpatine, which is probably true, but I feel like that these probably had a bit in terms of him not getting the rank of master. And even looking at this makes me really feel like that Qui-Gon was really the Jedi to train Anakin because I guess you could say the attitude and the feelings Anakin has, I feel like Qui-Gon would get. You know, Qui-Gon, I think, really had the right idea on how to handle the Force. And while I don't really know how to explain it, like, I wouldn't say he was completely against the Jedi way, in a sense, but I think he understood that there was just a little bit more to it. And you don't have to be afraid of it and completely shut it out. It's You can embrace it, but the key is to learn how to manage it, to control it. You know, the emotions that you feel and everything like that. And you can kind of even tell when he was battling Darth Maul, you know, that scene where they're kind of separated. Um, you know, the one thing you notice is Obi-Wan stood ready. Maul was standing ready. What was Qui-Gon doing? He was calming himself. You know, he was calming himself. And then when the moment came, he was right back in the action. And it wasn't something I really appreciated the first time I saw it, but the more and more I watched it, the more and more I began to appreciate to where I was thinking, maybe Qui-Gon is the one that really had the right idea on how to handle things in regards to the Force. You know, because it may seem like that he's just going off pure emotion and everything, which may not be entirely wrong. But at the same time, you know, I think he was wise enough to understand, you know, when to dial it back, I guess you could say. I mean, he completely trusted in the force. I mean, in a way, he almost seemed like Yoda in his trust with the force. But, you know, he wasn't afraid you know, to let emotion show, to put his faith, you know, in the things that people may not feel like they make sense. You know, he was really a strong proponent of, you know, things happening the way they should, you know, and that as things happen, that's how they're meant to happen. You know, he really seemed like he had that sense. But, um, yeah, so I think that's really cool to see Anakin almost as like a young Qui-Gon in a way. Which does make one wonder, how would Anakin have turned out if Qui-Gon was the one who trained him? But that is way beyond any points I probably really need to make with this episode. It really didn't have anything to do with it. So um, all I'm just going to say is that that was a fun episode. Definitely had the heart rate up. Man, almost makes me wish I had a heart rate monitor on there because boy, oh boy, that one got me good. So... <sighs> Definitely can't wait for episode three. That's probably going to be a really good one. Looking forward to see what happens now that the Ion Cannon has been discovered and how the Republic uh, counters that one. But until then, feel free to check out my previous reaction to Clone Wars if you haven't seen it already. And definitely check out some of my other Star Wars reactions and um, anything else that uh, you'd like to see me react to in here. And definitely feel free if there's anything else that you'd like to see me react to movie-wise, TV show-wise, even sports-wise. Feel free to leave them down in the comments below and uh, thank you all for stopping by and I'll catch you down the road.